and welcome back to part two of learn to make a journal my way so this is obviously just one of the types of journals that i make um this is going to be like a hardcover fabric i do make like tn journals like this and things and other types but this is just the one that we're going to do today i will do other tutorials on my channel of other types of journals so this one now we got to the part where we had put on now I'm going to, this is not completely dry guys because I don't know when you will be watching this but when I'm filming it it's literally just after we finished part one. So I actually have went ahead and folded in my cover but because I was impatient and didn't leave it to completely dry it has cracked slightly. That's why I said leave it. Now the cracks don't bother me, I'm going to add, I'm actually going to accentuate the cracks, I'm going to add ink over them to make them stand out just to make it look a bit more old but if you don't want the cracks leave it, I would leave it even overnight until it completely dries and then all you do is either you can take a ruler and just add it in and do that. You can use a bone folder and go in and score it down again and do that. Or like any kind of scoring tool. Okay, so it's basically really easy just to fold it over. And that gives you your complete fabric cover. So this is quite a large book. Now, when you see the reason, so when you actually put in the... What do you call them? I keep forgetting the word signatures today. What is wrong with me? You'll see there is a space. So when you put them in and you see there is a space, like I said, I wanted that when we were doing it. I've done that deliberately because I am going to add in some fabric and lace and I don't want that to affect. So when I put in um, my wee um, grommet for the closure, I do not want it to affect my lace and my fabric. So that's why I've made it slightly bigger. So, and that I learned through time. So I always do that now. So what I'm going to do then, we're going to quickly decorate them um, some of this. Now, obviously, I'm not going to do all of it um, just now because I do do it in stages. I'm going to do a bit of it, and then we're going to bind it. Okay. So what I'm going to do, still you can feel it's not even completely dry, but I really was anxious to get on and do this because I've got a few days off, and I wanted to do it while I've got time. So on the inside, now I do want to point this out to you guys. On the last video, I was highlighting, pushing down the paper to the fabric and that is why. Now that part is dry and you can see on the corners, you've got no lifting and on the paper, there is no lifting all the way around your corners and things are fine. So that's the importance of pushing in and making sure that you've got that complete um bind between the fabric and the paper now what i'm going to use is i've got these little corner pieces you can get these everywhere at amazon i got these ones off of aliexpress they're just the wee corner and um, pieces the book corners metal ones and i'm going to add these on just to protect the fabric so i just you can glue them on i used to glue them on but you don't need to and it's just a pest as if my corners on this book are nice and thick anyway so I'm just going to slightly open it up, pop it on the corner, okay, just make sure that you have pushed it all the way down and then you just clamp it and literally, unless you yank, <laughs> I cannot get it back up, unless you yanked it and yanked it and yanked it, then you are not, that's never coming off, okay, so you squeeze it on and you've got your wee protective bits on the edge I'm just going to do this on all four sides so we'll quickly open them up now if you guys obviously this video this these tutorials I do them as a bit of a craft along with me as well because like I said on the first part I am not going to skip anything I'm not going to do it off the camera because I really have had a lot of people just asking please can you do it start to finish so that I can make one as well so that's what we're doing but if you do feel there's bits that you want to skip past then of course you absolutely can that's the beauty of it being on video so if you can guys if you are watching this please can you hit me a thumbs up and can you please subscribe if you are not and also talk to me in the comments let me know if this is any good if there is anything in particular i'm not doing that i should be or you know just let me know if you're enjoying this wee series as well so, I'm going to push this one right 
on and then clamp it shut. There we go. That one's not coming off. And then last one. I'm just going to clamp on this one. I need to actually move my camera. It's the same place as it's been for a while now um, here, but because I've got my cricket next to me now, the camera angle's a wee bit, it's just a wee bit restricted, but I've got lots of space at that side. Anyway, so that's my four corners on. You can see they're on the corner of the cover. So, have I got that the right way? No, that's it, the corner of my cover. So I want to highlight these wee cracks. As I said, the simplest way, if you do not want cracks down here, is to leave it overnight to dry, complete 24 hours or 12 hours, and you won't get that. Okay, It's just because it raises up when you don't leave it long enough. Now I'm going to go in with a Distress Oxide and I'm just going in with a Rare Earth brush. You can use whatever you want to, like, you can use your brushes, you can use your... Um, what do you call them, your daubers, you can use the foam, so I use a lot of the time I use the foam, um, the cut and dry foam, I use that as well, but these are my absolute favourite, the rare earth brushes, because they're just so easy to use, so you can see I've highlighted that now and I really like it because it looks dark and I'm even going to go over with the actual pad itself just to absolutely highlight it. And then I'm going to go right round the edge. And this is the Distress Oxide Vintage Photo that I'm using. So I'm just going right around the edge, darkening it up. I don't know how well it will show up on camera, but I'm just going right over. And then we'll do this part. Because obviously I'm doing like a, a B vintage floral botanical. So this is how I make my books look a bit older than what they actually are. So that's with the oxides, okay. Then what I'm going to do next is take the Distress Ink and I'm going to lift the book. And don't be scared to do this guys because Honestly, the end result makes it worth it. So I'm just going right over the edge of the fabric. I'm doing it on the spine as well. Both sides. And the reason I don't do it with the oxide is... I mean, you can. You can do it if you want to. If that's what you've got, the oxide, then that's fine. The reason I do it with the ink is because the ink's a bit darker. This one's actually a bit dry. I need to get a new Distress Ink, but it actually works out quite well that it's not as juicy. And if you've not got these inks, you just use any brown ink that you have got, and that will work just as well. Oh, this has just came off. Well, that's because I haven't closed it. Look, it's still got a gap in it. So let me just open the other side back up and make sure. I've got both sides on so look when you close it down what I did need to do so see on the inside how it's still lifting you actually need to go on and squeeze both parts like I did like see these ones they're not coming off so you just basically need to make sure that you squeeze both sides not just one and there we go let me just make sure yeah the ones are fine okay right so that's done okay then I just want to take this pad and I want to go in and kind of swirl it now it's not picking up a lot because this pad is really dry but and you might not be able to see it on the video but it is kind of making it look a bit oozy and making it look a bit bobbly but yeah, I definitely need to get a new vintage photo distress ink, but it's actually worked out really well. So we'll do that. Then this is the walnut stain. This is the oxide. Okay, so this is really quite dark. So I'm not going to go all over. I'm just going to add bits here and there. 
and again if you don't have these you can just use any brown put them in different directions as well like that okay and I'm also going to go in with the brush corduroy and this is the distress ink so just different colors where do you think it needs it like that and a bit more on the edge and you will get a really cool effect okay so that's that okay again on the inside I'm going to take the walnut stain because it's darker and you might think well why did you not just do that to start off with because see layering your ink because you will not cover everything that you've done so layering it actually does look like a layered effect now what I'm going to do so this is obviously let me just make sure I've got this the right way okay so my blue butterflies are down because let me just check where is my right in yes everything else is going up that way so the blue butterflies are down for me and everything else is that way so turn this back over I've also got some of these sprays now this is the ground express so this is the Tim Holtz distress spray if you don't use this guys what you could do is just get one of your ink pads any ink pads put it onto a mat or onto a block add a spray of water onto it and you'll get the exact same effect what I'm going to do is just spray some of this onto here okay that's a bit too much but hey ho and I'm going to sit that in it and then I'm going to pop it onto the book like that and I'm going to do it on here like that and then I'm going to double sand it on there and again here so it's just a nice wee cool wee technique and then we can do it on here and here it just makes it look like somebody's sat a bottle or something on your book. See what I mean? That's pretty cool. And then I'm just going to wipe off the bottom of the bottle. The rest of this here, I'm just going to use it just to kind of darken up some of the places at the edges where like you think it would be handled a bit more. You know, like actually in real life, just to make it, we can highlight some more of those creases like that. Okay, and just use up that wee last piece of ink. All right, okay, okay. Listen to my chair squeaking. Never used this because I sit in it all day for work as well. Right, okay. So I'm quite happy with that. Quite like that. Let's turn that over and you can see it's actually sticking into the fabric which is cool then we're going to take the um vintage photo let's give it a wee shake and i'm going to just flick it here there and everywhere pretty cool and then i'm going to go in with the antique linen again you do not have to have these sprays to do this. You can absolutely just use your ink pad. So I'll show you what I mean in a minute. Okay, and just turn that over. And we're just going to do the same on the inside with the antique linen. And a little bit with the vintage photo. Where do you think you need it? Okay, so while that's drying, I'll quickly show you what I mean. Now, say for example, I need to dry that. Say for example, I wanted to use, right, let's see. Let me find another brown ink pad that I've got. There we go, right, I've got soft suede. Okay, so this is brown. If I didn't have the sprays, all you would do is put a bit of your ink, whatever ink you've got, onto a block, okay? And then 
and then you get your water. You can add in some water. Quite a bit because you want it to be quite watery so you can flick it. And then you take a paintbrush, suck your brush in it. Okay, let me just grab a piece of card and then you just flick it like that. You see, and you get the same effect. So if you don't have sprays, don't worry about it. You can absolutely still do the flick. You don't have to have the sprays. And you can do that with any colour of your ink. Okay. So, that's that. Now, pop that to the side. Okay, what I'm going to do next, let's think. We're going to bind it, I think. Quite like that though, isn't that? Sort of vintage it up a bit. It's made it look really grungy. I'm going to put an image on here. I'm going to put some fabric down the spine, some lace and stuff like that down the spine as well. So I think what we will do, now you may be thinking that these pages look awfully clean to be going into a grungy book. Well, once we get them bound, that is where then I start decorating them. You may want to decorate yours first before you put them in, and that is absolutely fine. It is your choice, but this is just the way that I do it. So, what I use... Now, again, there is... If you don't like this way, guys, there is so, 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 so many tutorials about binding on YouTube. You can check that out, or you may have your absolute own way of binding as well. So I use one of these wee poker tools. This is called, it's actually called an awl, but it's a poker tool. I am going to use some wax twine. You can use baker's twine um, as well. And I'm going to use a needle. So, just a big needle, just a big darning needle. You can get these lots of different places. You can order them on Amazon, eBay. Just needs to have a bigger eye on the end. Then, let me just get up and get comfy. And so like I said, you decide which way you want to have your books, your signature. So I think, yep, I think I'm going to go that, that, and then that. So this is going to be my first one. Now, what I use is one of these. Just one, you can see I've stabbed it a million times, making, just doing the binding on both sides. You can use this, you can use an old sponge, you can just use an old book and stab into the book. Just something to take the weight and something to stab into so you're not stabbing into your desk. Okay, and that's it. So you turn it on its side. As I said, I've got three, so I'm roughly going to go about, I would say about there. One in the middle, and then one at the back. So you're roughly, I mean, this doesn't have to be absolutely accurate, guys. I would roughly leave about, yeah, half an inch between the front and the first signature. If you want to, if you want a measurement, it is about half an inch, okay? So that's what I do. And then, so first of all, let's get our string. Now, a lot of people do measurements. They do like two and a half of the book and things. I don't. I just take like this much okay so like a meter or so far too much but i always like to have a bit extra just so that it makes it easier for when you're pulling it through so you just pop that through the needle you get your signature and you are going to make sure it is the right way up because i have bound so many books and it has been the wrong way so if you can see i'm actually going to stand up for this part okay you can see I've left about half an inch in between there and there, okay? And I've got my wee spongy bit underneath. And I'm just going to... Once it's open, what I do is I always make sure that I, I jiggle it, make sure it's as tight as can be, and then I clip it just on one side. And I make sure I've got the exact same space, because when we measured our... Journal cover, we've done it a quarter of an inch each side. So you just make sure, roughly by eye, that you've got the right amount of space. You make sure you're as straight as you can be. And then you go in with one hole. All the way through. Okay. 
make sure you're straight you go in with your second hole in the middle and then your third hole like that and then before I lift it what I always do is I put my needle in like that okay now I want my string the, the ends the tails to be on the outside so what you need to do okay so I've got my tails here is you go through one of the ends so it doesn't matter if you start at the top or the bottom but you go through okay all the way through just pull it pull the tail see why I like to leave it a bit longer just so it doesn't come out then you go up the top one or the bottom one depending on where you've started so you don't go near the middle hole yet okay you're just going up the top and because I've lifted it I've lost my hole but that's all right I'm just going to go through my pages there we go and you'll see your hole you can see your needle coming up through as well so if you do lift it and you lose your hole you just open up the pages see like what I'm doing and then you just feed the pages onto the needle a lot of time you don't have to do this it's just because I lifted the book to show you guys that my needle slipped it but that's all right see and then I just feed them on to the needle like that. Yeah. Okay. And then pull it up and pull the tail out. So you've got your two ends here. Okay. Then you want to put your needle straight through and straight through the middle one. So nice and easy there is lots of lovely stitching that you can do on youtube as i said but this is the one that i use and it's always worked for me and it makes it nice and tight and then again you just pop it through exact same hole and pull it out the other side okay so you can see now the reason i've done it that way going from the inside is because i want these to be really neat because when i turn it over now I am actually going to cover my spine with fabric, with lace and things. If I wasn't, I would now at this point, I would measure from the top to bottom and see where I had put my holes and things. But in this tutorial, if you want to follow it, I am going to put fabric on the back of the cover. So I don't have to measure it. Okay, which suits me better because I absolutely hate measuring. So I've just tied a knot four times and I'm going to cut that off there. Take off the clip and then turn it around. That is your first um, signature. Now, obviously, the more you use the book, the flatter it will lie. Okay, it's just the, it's the nature of the beast. The more you use it, the flatter it will lie. But that's pretty flat for me. Like that's I'm happy with that. It's pretty flat. I could still take that and write on it. Um, and that is your first one. Okay. So that's your first signature in. You can see that. Okay, sorted. And we're just going to repeat the second and the third. So I'm going to go in. Now I know that I want that about there and about, I would say about there. So again, making sure my butterflies are facing down and always double check. I know that that's the going the right way because it's so easy. The many times that I have done it, it is just crazy. So now I'm going to do my second one. So the same thing again. I just open it up, press it all, make sure it's all nice and tight. Clip it together. And I always clip the one that's further away from me. I don't know why. It just makes it a bit easier to handle the book when you are binding it. Okay. And then I'm going to stand up again. I know that I've got my sponge underneath, I can feel it. And because I'm standing up, I can look over it and I can see, right, okay, where am I? If you lift this up as well, it'll show you like the space you've got. So I know that I want to go about there. I want to line it up with this signature here. So I'm quite happy round about there. I'm just going to make sure it is straight in between. So can you see that? Straight in between that's good and again I'm just going to go in 
and punch. Now I'm not measuring it like I said because I'm doing the fabric on the cover or the lace and things. If I did at this point I would have measured it. So I may show that on another tutorial but not on this one because I don't need to. Okay so that's straight and then my last one in here. Okay and then again before I take it out I'm just going to thread my needle, take a good piece, pop that through, go into my hole, oops, there we go, go into my hole and pop it right through, okay, so when I take this out, I'm going to go right through the book and take it out. Then I'm going to go back in my one at the top, push it through. Oh, I need to sit down for this, guys. I'm trying to look over the top of it and I can't see. <clears throat> Push it right through. There we go. Pull up your tail. You've got your two ends. Keep them nice and tight. Push it down through the centre. And again down through the centre. Oops. There we go. And down through the centre. Now, I know that the first time, I should have said this actually, but when I done the first one, my line had already went on each side. So I didn't even think to say to you. But what you need to do is make sure that you've got one tail on one side of this and one side on the other and then you just pull it as tight as you can without breaking it tie it one, two, three oops, four you can see you've got a nice space here in between which is what you want and then you take off your clip so then we can go to number two and we can see that we have got all the pages that have all been put in nicely and we're sorted. Okay, so that's that one. And then the third one, the third and final one. We're just going to get our wax thread. And do the exact same thing, make sure it is facing the correct way. Okay, and then the final one. Exact same thing, make sure we're the right way up. I've got my wax thread. I'm going to take my signature, make sure that I've got it pressed in as tight as I can. And then clip it. Stand this up, take it here so it's got the same kind of space. Sorry guys, if that was my head in there. But there. Okay. Keep it straight, keep it the same height as your other ones. And then grab your all. One. Make sure it's straight up now with a wee bit there. Two. And three. Okay, needle. Three. 
るあれ Take it through. Sit down again. So you can see how easy it is to bind them when you do it like this. There may be even easier ones out there, there may be, you know, different ones, but this is the one that I like to use. So there we go, so we've got that. And the last wee part, again, you just pop it through the centre. through the center. Have I got that the right way? So just before I do do that, yeah, I've um, as I say I'm really cautious of that guys because I really have done that so many times and thought well not so many times but you know what I mean I've done it a few enough times anyway to think right that's it again make sure that this one one is on each side Pull as tight as you can without breaking it. One, two, three, four. I don't know why I do four, it's just a habit. Now, take the clip off. Which way have I got this? Put this the right way. Yep. What you can do, now obviously, um, I've not got my binding done neatly. Sometimes I like it like that, if that's the look I'm looking for. There are tutorials, and I will do one eventually, that you can measure it and things. But as I said, for this book, it doesn't need it. And you can see I've got lots of space for my fabric and my lace, which is what I wanted. Because by the time you put that on, you're going to need that space. Um, so yeah, that's basically the book bound. Now, let me pop all this in here. Because if I didn't, then I will lose it. So these can go away. I don't need them now. Oops, that can go away. And that keep away so we can put that back in. That wee binding kit that I got, that was actually from um what do you call it? BB Craft. Why is that one not staying on? I've never had that problem before with these. Do you know what? I'm gonna add a wee bit of glue on it. For some reason, that particular one, all the rest of them. Yep. 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 For some reason, this particular wee metal one does not want to stay on so just to be sure you could do it with a, but for this we one there's always one so they say there's always one don't know why it doesn't want to stay on I've squashed it like all the other ones there you go it ain't coming off now once that glue adheres onto there that will not come off There we go, sorted. Right, let me pick up some of this stuff. Put the inks over here. So that's basically the binding. Okay, so you've got your three signatures. You can see it's starting to lie flat already, which is good. So by the time I've done lots of work on it and put everything in and put the weight in, it will lie flat for you to write in. Okay, which I love. So I think what we'll do just on this part before we even start going on eh, like this as we will do a wee bit of work on the cover and on the spine um and we'll do the closure as well just so that it makes it a bit easier so we'll do the closer closure first so i've got my wee box of goodies that carolan made me and i've got some what do you call these again guys they're called grommets but oh my gosh honestly I'm going to take two brown ones, okay, just because they'll tie in nicely. And then I use my um, Big Bite. But if you've got a hole punch, it would work just as good. If not, you can just do it with your um, bucket tool and make a wee hole for yourself. So I'm just going to go in. Now on a 
on this book what did i say so we are the cover itself is about nine just over nine and three quarters eight and three quarters sorry so i'm just going to roughly go in the center so if you want to i'll measure it for you in a second i just go up slightly more than the center there we are i'll tell you how many yeah it's about four and three quarters okay four and three quarters and then i just kind of eyeball it to where i want it again actually it's difficult when i'm trying to show you guys at the same time there we go so if i just do it four and three quarters a bit there okay so there and there i actually turned it pretty perfect there's plenty of practice so that's going to be like that and then these we guys so you get these wee sets um, that comes with the tools to do this as well but if not if you don't have them you don't have to use them so then this just goes in i can't remember which way you do it actually but i'll try both ways that sits on there and you squeeze it down oh, i think it's the other way goes in like that yeah that's it i'm going to do it both ways now because i've done it both ways on the other one just to make sure so basically it goes in it sits and you squeeze it goes in sits and you squeeze it there we go excellent so you've got that so that's done and then i'm just going to use some ribbon to fasten it so i'm just using this satin brown ribbon now at this point if you wanted to add in some charms onto the side with your ribbon you could add them in now okay but i don't want to because i'm going to quite i'm going to decorate the front quite a lot so i'm doing a double ribbon okay and then what have I done with my lighter? I've got to, I'll get my lighter, I'll singe the end of the, the end of these just to stop them from freeing. I'll do that in a second. So I'm just going to pull them through like so and then tie them off. So one and you could add on beads and things as well if you wanted to. I've done that quite a few times. And then on this side. just going to go there so nothing hard double it up pop it through the hole open the hole up feed your ribbon through and pull and then just tie it in two knots now what I like to do okay once I've tied it because I just feel that this helps is take a wee bit of your glue dab a wee bit over the knot because once that dries it dries clear and it stops your knot from unraveling okay so it's a good wee tip there for you guys just pop that on there okay okay so now what I'm going to do is just tie the book shut so when it's full You've got to remember that it's going to be a lot wider. So, a bit there. Now, at this point, I do not cut the ribbon off because, again, you do not know how wide the book is going to be when it's finished. So, I just leave that as it is. I've just done that so it makes the front easier to um, decorate. So, you can see we've got a pretty cool looking journal so far and there was nothing hard in making it so hopefully you guys feel that as well now i want to decorate this front um i have got some more of the b kit printed out so you can see it's got plates book plates this is art amazes andrea's kit so there is a few 
things. That one's quite cool look. Mysteries of beekeeping explained. There's lots of different envelopes and tags and things that we might use. There's a nice one, Management of Bees. We've used that though in the book as one of the pages. Right, so I think I'm going to go with the honeybee. We will call it the honeybee. So, let's take that. Take the trimmer. So again, obviously, at this point, any images you've got, it might be an image out of a paper pack. It might be an image that you've drawn yourself. It might be an image that you have... Um, like you just got in your stash it could be a book image anything at all so basically just something that you want to use as your cover then you're sorted so i'm going to go with this and then i'm going to take some black because obviously it's a bumblebee and i'm going to mat it to here like that just leave in an edge there we go like that bring my book back in now what I do want to do is I've got a honeycomb stencil, okay, that I had a moustache as well. I'm going to bring in the walnut stain oxide. I'm just going to, oops, get this. And I'm going to stencil it on the fabric. Just a bit here, there and everywhere. Don't know how well you guys will see that, but... Just to bring in the kind of B effect. And I always like to do it in either threes or fives. Okay, so you can see, or even sevens. There we go, we'll do seven on that one. Don't need to do it on the back, like on the spine, because it's going to be covered. go that'll do okay so added on a wee bit of that i'm also going to go over with the vintage actually no i'm not I'm going to go over the brush corduroy because that's a bit lighter and just do a wee bit on there just to tie it in again do it in threes there we go Make sure I'm doing the front, which I am. Now I know that my fabric is going to come out about an inch, okay, or my lace. So that's why it's not completely centered. So I'm going to put it about there. Okay. Then I've got where is it? Bear with me just a wee second, guys. 
Right, so I've pulled out a couple of things. I've got these. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll see I made these on my Cricut the other night. And I've also got the bit of fabric that I want to use. So I thought, well, we'll put this on because then I will be able to see where I want everything. So basically, I'm going to get it exhibit there. Okay. So let me just cut a bit off of this because it's all way too long. Just make it a bit easier to handle. Again, keep that because we can use it throughout the book. And then I'm going to use this fabric glue, the Trimits fabric glue. Glue? Glue? <laughs> glue. And I'm going to go get my specs back on. I'm going to go let's straighten up the book and I'm going to go in where I want it. Down there. And across here. This glue is brilliant. You get it in the range. I'm sure if you're watching from America and things, you guys have got your own fabric glue. But that's just the one that I use. And I'm going to go in. Okay, like that, turn it, make sure it's pretty straight, it looks like it's going to be an actual binding on the book, yeah, that looks pretty straight, not too bad, not too bad, then turn it over and pull it as taut as possible, again I'm just going to take another bit of this off because it's far too big. Okay, so that's going to go like that. Now, what I am going to do is, I'm fortunate that this book has, eh, sorry, this fabric has got lines on it. Not that it bothers me. Half the time I just leave it quite ragged, but I quite like this with the lines. So I'm actually going to follow, let me stand up, follow the line. Like that. Okay, keep that wee trim. Okay, then we're going to go onto the spine, and again, we're just going to add on our glue. Some of you ladies that have got um, sewing machines and stuff might have added this onto the fabric first. Like before you even put the fabric onto the books, but as I said, this is just the way that I do it. You can absolutely do it your way. So I'm just going to pull that like that. And then repeat the exact same thing. Can see how far it goes out to about there. And then pull it out. And we need to leave this to dry okay I don't know what's I don't know why guys but this is another one of these corners popped off I don't know if it, if maybe the fabric is sliding that's why but I'm going to pop the glue in just to be on the safe side because I don't want them popping off I'll reinforce the other ones as well if I can get them back off or if they do pop off I've never actually had that happen before, but 
it must maybe the fabric there we go anyway put a bit glue on it that'll solve that okay so we need to leave this to dry okay and i'm just going to make sure yep that that's the right way up so now i know where my card is going to go roughly okay so i want that there i've also got this wee piece from the kit that i want to use so let me just pop that over here So you can see the amount of work that goes into a journal. Um, hours and hours and hours and hours of work. Obviously, if I was just sitting talking to you guys, I would do it a lot faster. Um, but yeah, it still takes a long time, a lot of work. And then I'm going to mount this onto a bit of black. Right, okay, so I've got that now. So the book itself is going to be called The Honey Bee, just because of the kit. I'm going to have that there, like that, because I really like that, like that. And then I'm going to take one of my wee things that I made. Now I'm not sure if I'll be able to trace that round in black, but first of all, what I'm going to do is use this thicker glue just because I'm gluing it directly onto the fabric and it will help it adhere. So I'm going to use that. You can see it's really gloopy. So I'm going to use that. And I'm also going to use some of the book binding as well, just to help it. That is going to go but they are okay is it all right that's going to go over there and then this one is going to go a bit earlier Put that in between the bee and the honey bee. So that's pretty cool. So we'll have that there, I think. Yep, I'm going to have this here to balance it. But I think we might need a wee bit black around that. Right, so I've got a bit of black card. Let's move that over to the side and let's see if I can kind of trace round. This heart. Like that. Have heart dies that I could have done this way, but I can't even bother with that. Ah, I quite like that, it's quite cute actually. Okay, so we've done that, we're just going to bring this back in, and this is going to go there like that. Okay. 
and put that there. I'll just hold it for a second. I'm also going to put more um, think that needs that. I don't know if it needs it or not but it's quite nice. I quite like it. <laughs> Does it need it? Don't know. Probably not but I quite like it. I want to have it over a wee bit so you can still see the fabric. A little bit of glue. And a wee bit of glue because the reason I'm doing this is I'm going to finish this part here because then when we come back for the next part this will all be dry and we can snip off the extra bits of fabric and go on to decorating more of it okay so that's that and obviously that bit will not be there and then So you could use any of your ribbons, you could use your laces, your crochet, whatever your colour scheme is with your journal, you can do it. Okay. A wee bit squint, but that will get trimmed tomorrow once it's dry. go what do you guys think that with that done the edge just like I quite like it actually it's quite nice quite cute and that'll be the back and then on here just to finish it we're going to do the same are we hmm Yep. And by the time we come back to that, that will be completely dry. And then we can snip it. There we go. So that's going to be the back. Obviously, what I would do as well once it's dry is I'm going to go over it with the ink and vintage it up a bit. Same with this one. I will go over it with the ink and vintage it up a bit. But that's where we are so far, guys. We are here. So we've got it bound and we've started decorating the cover. So yeah, let me know what you think of it. And I look forward to seeing you in part three. Thank you.